That's right folks, welcome, welcome to this Diablo 2 Let's Play Misadventure series. Your Sambo and joining us as always on our Misadventure series is Tallahassee, aka Screaming Donkey, or aka in this case Cassie Hack. Good evening, kind sir. Hello, hello. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm so excited to be here, and I know you are. I think you're a bit of a fan of Diablo 2. Am I right? Yeah, it's been so long since I last played this game, though. Oh, tell me about it. In fact, that's probably a great place to start. Of course, folks, you guessed it, we're playing Diablo 2. And, of course, with Diablo 3 on the horizon coming out next year... Tallahassee and I thought you might enjoy a bit of a misadventure series with us gaffooning around here in the, well, the evil Denzian field world of Diablo 2. And of course, mate, I think what it came out in, what are we talking, 2000, 2001, somewhere around there? Would that be right? Something hang like on. that. Hang on, I'll find, I'll actually find the date. Oh, yep. Okay, you can go to the Wikipedia. Um, I'll, I'll just... I'll just, no, no, I'm going to take out my CD case. Let me just oh. get the dust off some of it. Oh, you've actually got, actually got the real CDs there as he blows the dust off it. Yes, wow. I do. That's um, awesome. Copyright 2000 Blizzard Entertainment. Oh, can you believe it, folks? This, that makes it 12 years old almost. Well, 11 years, but coming up 12 years old. I can't believe that. That it doesn't seem like that long. I remember when this came out. Now, Tallahassee. Part of Diablo 2, of course, in doing a misadventure series, is getting all nostalgic. Uh, I've certainly got my Diablo 2 stories, but, I mean, you must have yours. Tell, tell us what you were actually doing uh, when Diablo 2 came out. Oh, God, it was the tail end of high school. Ooh. Ooh, that's yeah, dangerous. So instead of instead of doing high school, I was doing this. <laughs> it so, explains why I do what I do. I was just going to say, it's probably the reason both of us are uh, in the position we are these days. We can blame it all on Diablo 2. Seriously, though, I mean, I'm sure we're not the only one. I mean, when this game came out, it was absolutely groundbreaking. I mean, I'd never played a game like this in my life before. I'd played RPGs before. In fact, I'd played all the early Bioware stuff. In fact, before they were called Bioware back when they were called Black Isle Entertainment, I think is the company. Uh, games like Planescape, Torment, Icewind Dale, Baldur's Gate. Were you ever into those sort of games? No, I never played them. Yeah, no, a lot of people didn't, actually. But um, a lot of people who didn't play those games certainly played this one when it came out. I mean, it was like, I mean, you know, I think a lot of people referred to it back then as Digital Crack. I mean... Seriously, can you try and even estimate how many hours you would have put into this game back then? No, I, I, I really don't know how many hours I put into it. But would have been like... All I know is that it's, it's pretty much the only game I played for about two solid years. Yeah, okay. Well, there's your answer, folk. And you're probably talking about thousands of hours. Uh, I'd be the same. By the way, it doesn't mean I'm any any better at it um i was never never up there terrible. In the i can't remember anything about it yeah it's been a long time um and it's amazing actually looking at the game now uh, all the memories sort of flood back but it's amazing how i mean look it looks crude there's no doubt about it uh, by today's standards and folks you know you'll probably notice that the youtube video is a bit misshapen and and it looks a bit pixely and all the rest of it but you know back back in the day tallahassee i mean the graphics were outstanding. This was cutting edge. Yeah, it was cutting edge. Um, and even by today's standards, once you start playing it a while, you kind of get over the fact that it's all pixely and blobby and you just sort of get sucked into the game just as if it was 2000, the year 2000, all over again. But tell you what, mate, I'm <clears throat> super excited for this. And I know you are. Um, so let's get right into it, folks. <clears throat> and uh, like Tallahassee says... Just before we yeah, kick off, yeah. just before we kick off, I'm looking at my original CDs. And it comes in this big ass um, CD case, <laughs> and there isn't there's an install disc, a play disc, and a cinematics disc. <laughs> oh and my lord! On that disc, it says for Windows 2000, 98, 95, and NT, and Macintosh. Ah, oh, now that's a really good point. 
actually you know what pretty much most of those operating systems are obsolete now but isn't it amazing uh, you know whether you're a Mac fan or not Blizzard have and always will probably and still do to this day always release their games dual format I mean if you go down to the shop now and bought um, well gee let's stick with the error uh, something like Warcraft 3 you'd be able to throw that in your Mac and it would play natively right through to well Starcraft 2 and World of Warcraft they're Mac native clients as well aren't they yep and all the installs are on the one CD as well which is pretty groundbreaking stuff especially for something that's nearly 12 years old and can you imagine uh, you know the amount of work of the developers that went into this game and then basically having to port it and do it all again for you know two completely different operating systems that's real dedication and I think that is one of the hallmarks of Blizzard uh, you know the whole quality and trying to cater to everybody it's so awesome but you know what staring at this screen Oh, I mean, it brings back amazing memories, but it also makes me shiver, just like you. The amount of hours I put into this—it's just one of those games that you've just got to just just one more go, just one more, one more area, one more quest. It, it, it's just insatiable desire. And of course, I don't have to tell you, Tallahassee, that desire is for one thing and one thing only. Screw the story, although Oof. it has got yeah, loots. It's got an amazing story, by the way, for those of you who are interested, uh, and you'll see that as we play through. But Telahas is absolutely right. This is all about the loots, and uh, boh, you know what? Inventory Tetris. Having to decide what loot to trash and what loot to pick up. That's half of the game. It gets so frustrating at times. But anyway, we'll get into that. So let's start um, with a quick overview of what we're looking at here I mean I doubt there's many of our viewers that have never seen a Diablo 2 screen but we should go through it a little bit quickly I suppose so um, don't know about you Tallahassee but I've got the little mini panel uh, open down the bottom of my screen here so we'll we'll wander through that but um, perhaps could you take us through the main part of the interface these big balls that are looking at us here and tell us what they are and also what all these symbols are at the end of each of the UI elements that when we click on them bring up a whole bunch of icons do you want to take us through those yep so we've got one that is for life which is the red one then we have mana on the other side all right now by the way obviously there are different classes in this game and we'll get to that in a minute but do all classes use mana all classes use mana all right so it's nice and simple all right cool all right so that's them what are these what are these buttons at the side one says normal attack the other one says what well, says firebolt in my case and if you click on them a whole bunch of other icons come up so what's the deal there yeah they're basically your quick actions so you can actually have actions that are set to those particular buttons so you can just click on them ah uh, okay all right ah oh. all right so if I want to so obviously it's the left mouse button and the other side is the right mouse button so I could assign different actions to the left and right mouse button depending on what I choose buttons. yeah exactly right. okay all right now I notice that we've got if we move along the elements of the UI we've got a big yellow bar and a little running man what's the go there yep that's your stamina so you can go ahead and sprint so you can either press control down and click where you want to go and that'll make you run or you can press R oh, okay uh -huh. and then click where you want to go and that'll that will actually keep run on ah okay so there you go folks hopefully you can see that on the YouTube video I'm toggling by pressing R and that's obviously going to toggle us between walk and run and so you're saying that that stamina bar uh, presumably that's going to wear down mine says 74 out of 74 being a different class than you is yours a different number yeah, I've got 97 stam. Okay, so and that'll make sense in a minute, folks, when we describe our classes to you. But basically, I can run around and that bar will drain, I presume. And once it's drained, I have to wait for it to recharge before I can run again, yeah? Yep. There's yep, uh, also there's two buttons that you missed out on. So one is for new stats. Oh, yep. Here we go. So when you level up, it'll bring up your little panel and you can go ahead and fill in your stats. Okay. So it's your character screen if you press C. All right, let's press C. There we go. All right, so that's a good time to talk about our classes, I guess. Um, so you can see here I'm Sambo NZ. I am a sorceress, which is effectively a mage. 
and I'm level one, I've got zero experience. And you can see here we've got stats of strength, dexterity, vitality and energy. And in my case, you can see that the strength translates to attack damage and a firebolt damage. And we'll see those numbers go up as we add stats. Here's my stamina, my life, and of course my mana. And then down the bottom, resistance is so. Tallahassee, just talking about stats, I'm a sorceress. I'm going to assume that one of my main stats that I'm going to want to put points into is energy. So I've got a nice big mana pool. And I'm imagining strength as well because strength is actually powering my firebolt. What, um, I'm a sorceress, so I'm a ranged caster. Tell us about your character here, Cassie Hack. What class are you and what are your stats that you're going to be concentrating on? Okay, for me, I'm going to be putting enough strength in so I can do enough damage. But I'm also going to be putting enough into dexterity for my defense. Okay, All right. So weapon block will block all the time. And also then I'm just going to be stacking vitality. All right, so you can see there, folks. So that way I have a big health pool. Yep, so we've got a couple of different styles. So what's your actual class, by the way? Oh, what's it called? Assassin. Assassin. Right, now, folks, what you may not know is that we are playing with the Lord of Destruction expansion. And, of course, most people that play Diablo 2 these days have that. Um, all right, help me out here, Tallahassee. We've got classes that were in the original Diablo 2. Now I'm going to start listing them off. We have had the Barbarian. I think the Sorceress yep. was also the original, wasn't yep, it? Yep, the Amazon. Amazon, that's right. That was the Pole. And Paladin. Right, oh yes, the Pally. The Pally. Um, now the Amazon, she was a spear-wielding uh, sort of melee fighter, if I remember rightly. You could do it one. Of, you could actually do it a couple of different ways. Oh. Um, you could have her as a like ranged, so using bow and arrow. You'd also have her throwing javelins as well. Oh, okay. You could you could have her as a melee. All right, so she's really. And versatile. also you could have her as. Yeah, you could also have her as sort of a tank as well. All right. Okay. So um, and then of course the <clears throat> expansion came out, and oh hang on, where was the necromancer? Was that in the original, or is that an expansion? I think that was... No, he was in the original, sorry. Yep. Sorry, I missed him. Yeah, no, so did I. That's right. So Necromancer, of course, uh, that's a pet class that raised the dead. And then the expansion came out, and we had the Druid, which could have pets. And then I think your class as well is an expansion character, isn't it? The... Um, that's right. The Assassin. I mean, so... The thing is, it always got me, and we were talking about this before we started filming, you think of an assassin as a rogue, but correct me if I'm wrong, your starting equipment is actually a shield and a one-hander, is that right? Yeah, it is, which is a bit odd. Okay, so you can actually be, which by the way you always are when we're playing together and it's fantastic, you can be a bit of a tanky character as well as a DPS, would that be a fair assumption? That's right. I mean, I don't necessarily need to have the shield. Um, right. With with claw block, you can get it up fairly high, which means that you don't actually need a shield. Right. You can actually use the two one-handers to block. Oh, okay. Oh, and okay. that and that sort of mitigates all damage. Well, gee, that's nice. Which that's is right. ridiculous. Yeah, that's right. If it's there, take it. And of course, what we're talking about here, folks, with all these different uh, types of play styles that you can have with one character, if I close my character screen here and then we hit T to bring up the skill tree, this will look familiar to you guys if you've ever played a game like WoW or even Rift or anything like that. It's basically, Tallahassee, would you say this was a, a good approximation? This is basically like a talent tree that we're looking at here, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I mean, when you really think about it, this you can draw a direct line from Diablo 2 to any MMO. Yeah, yep. I agree with you. And it's basically... So, it was especially given, with all the systems that are here. Yeah, definitely. I think it definitely started a style of character development and character building in MMOs, uh, and it came from here. And, for example, going to have a look at my one here. I mean, I've got, I've got three trees... And they, you know, again, folks, when you level up, just like any game, and you'll see it once we get going, you know, you earn talent points, or I think they're called skill choices. I can't remember. We'll call them talent points. And, of course, we can start putting them into these trees and building down the tree is the way you go in Diablo. 
And if I look at my three types of builds, just like Tallahassee said, you know, we can really specialize in different ways. Now, I'm basically a mage, so I can either go down the cold spells route here, and that's going to give me sort of things like, you can see there, frozen armor, ice blasts, shiver armor. So it's a very defensive-y, slow-y sort of build. Or I can go lightning, and that's going to give me things uh, like charged bolts, static fields, uh, novas, lightning, all that sort of thing, chain lightning. Or, which I think Tallahassee is the way I'm going to go, by the way, a good old fire mage here, and you can see I've got fire bolts, uh, I've got inferno, I've got blaze, fireballs, fire walls, all that sort of thing. Um, so depending on the playstyle that you want to do, you can really make that choice. And I'm going to go fire. Now, Tallahassee, what are your three? Mine are cold spells, lightning spells, and fire spells. What do you get as an assassin? Well, I've got martial arts, oh, shadow cool. disciplines, and traps. Whoa, okay, so again, just judging by their sound, three totally different um, styles of play, I'd imagine. I mean, traps is pretty obvious. Obviously, it's going to be um, heavily based around setting different types of traps. Martial arts sounds like it's exactly that, very melee-focused, would it be? Yep, so heavy melee focus. Um, it's all like charge-up skills. Right, right. Uh, what are some of the names of some of the... big finisher. Oh, oh, is it? Oh, okay. So is it one of those so, things like Tiger Strike, oh, uh, Dragon yeah. Talon, Dragon Claw, Cobra Strike. Um, last one is called Phoenix Strike. That's like the very bottom of the tree. Right, right. All right, getting the idea. So it's like a very sort of oriental martial art type style with the finishing moves. What's the, the shadow one yeah. called again? Shadow Disciplines. So what are, what are some examples of some of the talents that you can get or some of the moves you can get in there? I honestly don't remember. Well, there's Claw Mastery, so that'll improve damage with Claws, which is what I've got equipped at the moment. Oh, yep. There's things like Burst of Speed, uh, Weapon Block, which is one that I'm going to be specking into. Yes, yes. Uh, Shadow Warrior. There's Shadow Mastery. There's Venom, which is another area that I want to get into as well yep yep all right um, there's mind blast there's psychic hammer mind blast <laughs> it's a uh, um ended up in wow that one um all right so again yeah um, you can tell there depending on well, what... i think a lot of them did yeah I, I i agree i mean this game spurned so like many one... so many industry tropes didn't it it's amazing yeah there's a talent here called cloak of shadows ah Okay, yep, so there you go. You can see where everything these days comes from. But again, demonstrating that, you know, depending on what Tallahassee wants to do, um, you know, he can choose and mix it up as he likes. And, of course, the other great thing about this game, mate, is, you know, if, for example, if I end up talenting, say, you know, five or six points down into Fire Spell and then decide I actually want some armor, like magical armor, there's absolutely nothing to stop me putting a point here into my frozen armor skill in the cold spell. It just means that I don't use that point in the fire spell tree. I mean, you don't, you're not limited to going down one tree, are you? You can mix and match how you like. You can really mix and match depending on what sort of playstyle you're going for yeah. and what sort of group composition you've got as well. And that's the other big thing, of course. So I think we're going to match quite well. I mean, you're obviously melee, um, fairly stocky. I'm squishy and ranged. Perfect combination, if you ask me. So if we carry on through the UI, folks, you've seen the character screen here. You've seen the skill tree. There it is. You see we've got another one here, I for inventory. That brings up the inventory. And of course, you can see we've got a grid here. What's this? Three, six, nine, ten by four. So we've got 40 slots there. And of course, you can see we've also got slots for hands, legs, chest, head, neck. We've got a couple of rings and a belt. And of course, we've got our weapons up here. And a big thing to remember about Diablo 2 is you've got two weapon sets. Uh, so you can either hit W at any time in the game to swap between them. But it means, for example, in my case, I've got a two-handed staff that I've got here at the moment that's in one weapon slot. If I had an offhander and a wand or something like that, I could actually put them in the other number two weapon slot. And that means I can switch between them at any time just by hitting W. It becomes very handy. Now, speaking of 
uh, inventory I can see we've got our gold here of course we're going to be collecting up lots of gold out in the field my friend um, I, one thing that we noticed earlier this is a very early game and back then they didn't have the gold sharing mechanic I, I think is that right no it doesn't seem like it's sharing gold so that means if you click on a you know a, a stash of gold out in the open you get it all I don't get any percentage of it like out in the field no so All that's right. fine, because we can always divvy it up later on. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're going to be playing the game together. I'm sure if one of us needs to buy something, uh, we'll be able to swap that gold around. Also notice, of course, um, that what I get as a new uh, char character, if I can get my mouth around it, um, not only do I get a scroll of identify and a scroll of town portal, which I'll explain in a minute, but we also get a bunch of healing potions down here. But firstly, scroll of town portal, what is that? That, of course, means that you can re uh, use that anywhere out in the field, and that will put up a portal, which portals are straight back here to the rogue encampment and we'll show you why we'll be wanting to do that later on and then it actually allows you to go back out to it so it's a nice quick way of getting home to dump your loots uh, if you've got full inventory or something like that and then we got the scroll of identify and for example if Tallahassee picks himself up a dagger and it has no stats on it it might have the flavor text that says you know unidentified and that means in order to open up the stats on that weapon you've got to actually use a scroll of identify on it uh, so we'll end up going through lots of those now Tallahassee I know here we've got four slots down the bottom for our healing potions and of course they're assigned to one two three four on the keyboard um, later on once we get a bigger belt that will actually swap to I think we end up with eight slots don't we all up yeah eight yep there you go and you hit your tilde key by the way if you want to see them uh, open up so there we go that explains that menu uh, we've got our party screen here and you can see in the game we've got Cassie Hack the assassin and if I click on invite there we go hopefully Tallahassee do you get an invitation there there we go I did there we are and now somehow I've managed to turn off our portraits Cassie Hack has joined your party now I just want to go into options because I've forgotten the key that it uh, is. It's Z. Oh, is it Z? Thank you, thank you. Tallahassee's the expert. There it is. You can see we can toggle. We've got Cassie, and I think that green bar above your head is your health. So of course that's very important that we keep an eye on our party member. Now we've also got auto map on in the uh, top left-hand corner there, and that always shows where Cassie is and shows the layout of the land and of course any important NPCs or any important areas on the map that we need to know about like dungeons and then finally we got M for our message log now the way you chat with your partner if you're not on voice chat with them you just simply hit enter and you can see it's brought up a little entry screen there and we can just literally type hello Tao hit enter and you can see it appears up the top left here and if he writes back to us it will just appear up the top left as well there we go get on with it he says good old Tallahassee style now there's one more thing we need to know about and that is Q which is our quest log currently we don't have any but we'll be absolutely getting them as we move on all right so you know how it works folks you click on the ground you can see there we're automatically walking as Tallahassee mentioned if you hit R we're now auto running and that will drain our stamina bar now if I click on Tallahassee there you go you can see I'm asking currently the other player to trade so for example if I wanted to give Tallahassee my weapon oh look at that he's actually got something for us oh thank you my friend oh look at that he's got a mana pot for us as well gosh it's nice having friends I can accept that and I can hover over it and see that's an eagle orb and it's a one-handed weapon so I'm going to be able to put that in my alternate weapon slots we'll accept that trade thank you very much my friend appreciate that now what I can do You're is welcome. I can Thank you. I can drop that down and pop that into one of the slots down here on my belt. So now when I hit 4, it will actually replenish my mana. And I'm going to hit W there to swap weapons. And we're going to put this in our alternate weapon slot. And what I can do is I can compare. This actually gives us plus 2 to frozen armor. And it is a sorceress only weapon. And it's a staff, a one-handed staff. But if I do use that, I lose my frost bolt, um, rather my fire bolt ability. Because if we look here... Um, it gives me firebolt with my current stuff. There you go. So thank you for that. Now there's one more important thing, and that is this, our private stash. Now Tallahassee, um, you can see here, I think 
that this improved a great deal since Diablo 2. This is a much bigger stash, isn't it? No, it's the same size. Is it from Lord of there's Destruction just, to Diablo 2? Yeah, there's just more room for gold. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Oh, okay, I understand. Mm. So it's saying their gold max is 2.5 million. Good Lord. I don't think I've ever had that much gold. But anyhow, our private no, stash... No, I think... Yeah? I think the most I ever have was about 800,000. That's still a fair amount. Mind you, the rate that you spend it in this game, it's not surprising. Um, so, of course, what we can do at any time, folks, if I want to, I can drag, just like that, drag and drop anything that I want to keep. That's like your bank. And if we hit escape, there we go. That stays in the bank. So if you want to keep things for later, that's our private stash, and we can go back and grab them. And, of course, that stays in the world because we are playing on a Battle.net game, by the way. We're not playing locally. Uh, so that will stay with the server. Now... What we need to do, you can see also that Warov here, he's got a uh, exclamation mark above his head, so obviously we're going to talk to him very shortly. But just quickly before we do, a couple of other quick things, namely, what is this? This is a waypoint. Here comes Tallahassee. Um, and you can see here that we've only got one opened at the moment. It's the rogue encampment. Basically, when we get out into the world, we'll discover more of these, won't we? We actually come across them and activate them. Uh, and that means we'll be able to actually teleport back to the rogue encampment for free and very quickly They will come in very handy over here where Tallahassee is we've got Charzi We won't talk to her just yet, but she's basically the blacksmith of the camp and she can repair our goods and also buys and sells some stuff uh, over where Tallahassee is here, we've got Geed. We'll get to him later as well. Oh, do you, I bet you have some interesting memories of Geed, my friend. I certainly have. Ugh. Anyway, um, whoops, didn't mean to trade with you there. We've got Warov, and of course, over here somewhere, where is she? You know who I'm talking about. Now, by the way, the, uh, the worlds in Diablo, every time you load them up, and start one they actually randomized so sometimes you have to walk out the front here other times you have to walk out the side it's never the same twice it's very cool anyway we've got Akara here she'll be giving us some major quests later as well well my friend I think we've covered off most things we've got Keisha here or Kashia she'll give us some hirelings later on but uh, in the meantime I think we're all done Gee, we're nearly out of time for our episode. This is amazing. But uh, what do you reckon? We go ahead and have a chat to Warov. Is there anything else I've forgotten to cover off? I don't think so. No, that's pretty much it. I mean, at least as far as the basics go. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure we'll come across more complex things later on in the game. And uh, look, as always, folks, as Tallahassee says, it's kind of our tradition for the first in our Let's Play Misadventure series to sort of spend it on the UI and the systems just in case... Uh, you're one of the few people that have never played Diablo 2 before. And uh, sure, it's not very action-packed, but uh, you know, you've always got the fast-forward button if you get bored. Uh, but it's probably nice having a bit of a refresher. And of course, in the next episode, we'll be getting into the thick of it. But certainly what we'll do now is we'll have a chat to Warov and see what he's got to say. Oh, greetings, stranger. I'm not surprised to see your kind here. Many adventurers have traveled this way since the recent troubles began. No doubt you've heard about the tragedy that befell the town of Tristram. Well, some say that Diablo, the Lord of Terror, walks the world again. I don't know if I believe that, but a dark wanderer did travel this route a few weeks ago. He was headed east to the mountain pass guarded by the rogue monastery. Maybe it's nothing, but evil seems to have trailed in his wake. You see, shortly after the wanderer went through, the monastery's gates to the pass were closed, strange creatures began ravaging the countryside. Until it's safer outside the camp and the gates are reopened, I'll remain here with my caravan. I hope to leave for Loot Gulane before the shadow that fell over Tristram consumes us all. If you're still alive then, I'll take you along. You should talk to Akara too. She seems to be the leader of this camp. Maybe she can tell you more. There we go, we've got our introduction to talk to her. And from now on, we can always talk to Warov. And you can see we can get that introduction again. We can get gossip off him. Uh, and most NPCs are like that. All right. Should we go over and speak with... What's her name? Akara or something? Here we go. Akara. 
That's her. Let's have a chat with her. Greetings, young sorceress. It is good to see more of your kind at work in the world these dark days. In my opinion, the world needs more women to fight against the great shadow. But I am forgetting my manners. I am Akara, high priestess of the Sisterhood of the Sightless Eye. I welcome you, traveler, to our camp. But I'm afraid I can offer you but poor shelter within these rickety walls. You see, our ancient sisterhood has fallen under a strange curse. The mighty citadel, from which we have guarded the gates to the east for generations, has been corrupted by the evil demoness Andariel. I still can't believe it. But she turned many of our sister rogues against us and drove us from our ancestral home. Now the last defenders of the sisterhood are either dead or scattered throughout the wilderness. I implore you, stranger, please help us. Find a way to lift this terrible curse, and we will pledge our loyalty to you for all time. Now an interesting point, Tallahassee. Obviously we're playing multiplayer. Whoops, she's not finished. Kasha's rogue scouts have informed me that a cave nearby is filled with shadowy creatures and horrors from beyond the grave. I fear that these creatures are massing for an attack against our encampment. If you are sincere about helping us, find the dark labyrinth and destroy the foul beasts. May the great eye watch over you. Um, yeah, so what I was saying is when we do these cutscenes or uh, you know any of these chat pieces does that come up for you as well or do you have to manually do it yourself I have to do it myself ah oh, okay all right wondered if it triggered them automatically so that's fine all right and you can see uh, here we can, um, we can yeah I'm just gonna say one thing they're all fully voiced as well I know I was just thinking that I would totally forgotten about that that's amazing for a game back in 2000 um, well hey you said yourself it came on what three CDs, so <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's probably why. Now, an important thing here to note, folks, is we can talk to Akara, but we can also trade with her, and this is a really important person to trade with. Now, I don't have any money yet, uh, so we can't buy them. But you notice a couple of items up the top left there: the Tome of Town Portal and the Tome of Identify. Now they are absolutely going to be something we'll buy because effectively what it means is that we can stack a whole bunch of these, these scrolls, into the tomes so they will take up lots less inventory space. And I'm sure as Tallahassee will tell you, um, inventory space is an absolute premium in this game. You can see also we've got keys. There are chests out in the world that you can open with keys. So you can buy keys and we've got thawing potion, antidote and stamina potion. Plus she always sells more scrolls of town portal and scrolls of identify. So we can also sell items to her. She's like a vendor. So she's quite an important person. Now. One more thing before we sign out, we've got a little icon here, quest log has been updated, so of course if we click on that, there it is, you can see it's come up, our first quest, the Den of Evil, and of course she spoke of that, look for the den in the wilderness outside the rogues camp, that is absolutely our first mission. Wow, so there we go, we made it folks, we made it through our first episode, like I said, not too much on the action front, but now I think Tallahassee, we've got all that out of the way, all in the first episode we don't need to cover it off anymore and that means from this point on it's what it's death it's loot it's action all the way what do you say it that actually sounds really good let's get oh. on with it i can't wait all right folks we're well, going to have to wait till the next episode of course because we're over time but certainly hope you're going to enjoy this romp this nostalgic romp through diablo 2 especially in the lead up to diablo 3 which we're all excited for Tallahassee, i'd like to thank you once again for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us on this misadventure it's been a while certainly can't wait it's going to be lots of fun i reckon yeah it's going to be something 
<laughs> it's going to be a time sucker. That's it. And uh, by the way, you have to protect me and keep me alive as per normal. Anyhow, folks, certainly look forward to you joining us in the ne next episode. Rather, this will be a weekly series. By the way, uh, maybe more if we find the time. But at this stage, we'll keep it to weekly. So certainly look forward to seeing you there. On behalf of myself, Sambo, uh, and of course my little sorcerer here, Tallahassee. It's us saying take care. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are in the world. We'll see you next time. And bye bye. Oh god, it was the tail end of high school. Ooh, ooh, that's yeah, dangerous. Yeah, so instead of yeah, instead of doing high school, I was doing this. <laughs> it so, explains why I do what I do. I was just gonna say it's probably the reason both of us are uh, in the position we are. These days, we can blame it all on Diablo 2. Seriously, though, I mean, I'm sure we're not the only one. We, I mean, when this game came out, it was absolutely groundbreaking. I mean, I'd never played a game like this in my life before. I'd played RPGs before. In fact, I'd played all the early Bioware stuff. In fact, before they were called Bioware, back when they were called Black Isle Entertainment, I think is the company. Uh, games like Planescape Torment... Icewind Dale, Baldur's Gate. Were you ever into those sort of games? No, I never played them. Yeah, no, a lot of people didn't, actually. But um, a lot of people who didn't play those games certainly played this one when it came out. I mean, it was like... I mean, you know, I think a lot of people referred to it back then as digital crack. I mean, seriously, can you try and even estimate how many hours you would have put into this game back then? No, I... I... I really don't know how many hours I put into it. But would have been like... All I know is that it's it's pretty much the only game I played for about two solid years. Yeah, okay. Well, there's your answer, folk. And you're probably talking about thousands of hours. Uh, I'd be the same. By the way, it doesn't mean I'm any any better at it. Um, I was never, never I know, up there terrible. in the league. I can't remember anything about it. Yeah, it's been a long time, um, and it's amazing actually looking at the game now, uh, all the memories sort of flood back, but it's amazing how, I mean, look, it looks crude, there's no doubt about it, uh, by today's standards, and folks, you know, you'll probably notice that the YouTube video is a bit misshapen, and, and it looks a bit pixely, and all the rest of it, but, you know, back back in the day, Tallahassee, I mean, the graphics were outstanding. This was cutting edge. Yeah, it was cutting edge. Um, and even by today's standards, once you start playing it a while, you kind of get over the fact that it's all pixely and blobby and you just sort of get sucked into the game just as if it was 2000, the year 2000, all over again. But tell you what, mate, I'm <clears throat> super excited for this. And I know you are. Um, so let's get right into it, folks. <clears throat> Recharge before I can run again, yeah? Yep, there's... Yep. Uh, also, there's two buttons that you missed out on. So one is for new stats. Oh, yep. Here we go. So when you level up, it'll bring up your little panel, and you can go ahead and fill in your stats. Okay. So it's your character screen if you press C. All right, let's press C. There we go. All right, so that's a good time to talk about our classes, I guess. Um, so you can see here, I'm Sambo NZ. I am a sorceress, which is effectively a mage. And I'm level 1, I've got 0 experience. And you can see here we've got stats of strength, dexterity, vitality and energy. And in my case, you can see that the strength translates to attack damage and a firebolt damage. And we'll see those numbers go up as we add stats. Here's my stamina, my life and of course my mana. And then down the bottom, resistances. So, Tallahassee, just talking about stats, I'm a sorceress. I'm going to assume that one of my main stats that I'm going to want to put points into is energy. So I've got a nice big mana pool. And I'm imagining strength as well because strength is actually powering my firebolt. What, um, I'm a sorceress, so I'm a ranged caster. Tell us about your character here, Cassie Hack. What class are you and what are your stats that you're going to be concentrating on? Okay, for me, I'm going to be putting enough strength in so I can do enough damage, but I'm also going to be putting enough into dexterity for my defense. Okay, right. So weapon block will block all the time, and also then I'm just going to be stacking vitality. Alright, so you can see there folks... So that way I have a big health pool. Yep, so we've got a couple of different styles. So, what's your actual class by the way? Or what's it called? Assassin. Assassin. Right, now, folks, what you may not know is that we are playing with the Lord of Destruction expansion. And, of course, most people that play Diablo 2 these days have that. 
um, all right, help me out here, Tallahassee. We've got classes that were in the original Diablo 2. Now I'm going to start listing them off. We have had the Barbarian. I think the Sorceress yep. was also the original, wasn't yep, it? Yep, the Amazon. Amazon, that's right. That was the Pole. And Paladin. Right, oh, yes, the Pally. The Pally. Um, now the Amazon, she was a spear wielding. Uh, sort of melee fighter, if I remember right, that have never seen a Diablo 2 screen, but we should go through it a little bit quickly, I suppose. So, um, don't know about you, Tallahassee, but I've got the little mini panel uh, open down the bottom of my screen here, so we'll we'll wander through that. But um, perhaps could you take us through the main part of the interface, these big balls that are looking at us here, and tell us what they are, and also what all these symbols are at the end of each of the UI elements, that when we click on them, bring up a whole bunch of icons. Do you want to take us through those? Yep, so we've got one that is for life, which is the red one. Then we have mana on the other side. All right, now, by the way, obviously there are different classes in this game, and we'll get to that in a minute, but do all classes use mana? All classes use mana. All right, so it's nice and simple. All right, cool. All right, so... That's them. What are these? What are these buttons at the side? One says normal attack. The other one says what? Well, says firebolt in my case. And if you click on them, a whole bunch of other icons come up. So what's the deal there? Yeah, they're basically your quick actions. So you can actually have actions that are set to those particular buttons. So you can just click on them. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Ah, oh. all right. So. If I want to, so obviously it's the left mouse button and the other side is the right mouse button. So I could assign different actions to the left and right mouse button depending on what I choose. Buttons, yep, exactly. Right. Okay. All right, now I notice that we've got, if we move along the elements of the UI, we've got a big yellow bar and a little running man. What's the go there? Yep, that's your stamina. So you can go ahead and sprint. So you can either press control down and click where you want to go, and that'll make you run, or you can press R. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And then click where you want to go, and that'll, that'll actually keep run on. Ah, okay, so there you go, folks. Hopefully you can see that on the YouTube video. I'm toggling by pressing R, and that's obviously going to toggle us between walk and run. And so you're saying that that stamina bar, uh, presumably that's going to wear down. Mine says 74 out of 74. Being a different class than you, is yours a different number? Yeah, I've got 97 Stan. Okay, so and that'll make sense in a minute, folks, when we describe our classes to you. But basically, I can run around and that bar will drain, I presume, and once it's drained, I have to wait for it to... Welcome, welcome to this Diablo 2 Let's Play Misadventure series. You're Sambo, and joining us as always on our Misadventure series is Tallahassee, aka Screaming Donkey, or aka in this case, Cassie Hack. Good evening, kind sir. Hello, hello. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm so excited to be here, and I know you are. I think you're a bit of a fan of Diablo 2, am I right? Yeah, it's been so long since I last played this game, though. Oh, tell me about it. In fact, that's probably a great place to start. Of course, folks, you guessed it, we're playing Diablo 2. And, of course, with Diablo 3 on the horizon coming out next year, Tallahassee and I thought you might enjoy a bit of a misadventure series with us gaffooning around here in the, well, the evil Denzian field world of Diablo 2. And, of course, mate, I think, what, it came out in... What are we talking, 2000, 2001, somewhere around there? Would that be right? Something Hang like on. that. Hang on, I'll find... I'll actually find the date. Oh, yep. Okay, you can go to the Wikipedia. Um, I'll, I'll just... I'll just... No, no, I'm going to take out my CD case. Let me just oh. get the dust off some of it. Oh, you've actually got... Actually got the real CDs there as he blows the dust off it. Yes, wow. I do. That's um, awesome. Copyright 2000 Blizzard Entertainment. Oh, can you believe it, folks? This That makes it 12 years old almost. 
well, 11 years, but coming up 12 years old. I can't believe that. That it doesn't seem like that long. I remember when this came out. Now, Tallahassee, part of Diablo 2, of course, and doing a misadventure series, is getting all nostalgic. Uh, I've certainly got my Diablo 2 stories, but, I mean, you must have yours. Tell, tell us what you were actually doing uh, when Diablo 2 came out. And uh, like Tallahassee hey, Aaron, says... Before we y- yeah. kick off, yeah. just before we kick off, I'm looking at my original CDs. <laughs> and it comes in this big ass um, CD case, <laughs> and there's an there's an install disc, a play disc, and a cinematics disc. <laughs> oh my lord! On that disc, it says for Windows 2000, 98, 95, and NT, and Macintosh. Ah, oh, now that's a really good point. Actually, you know what? Pretty much most of those operating systems are obsolete now, but isn't it amazing? Uh, you know, whether you're a Mac fan or not, Blizzard have and always will probably, and still do to this day, always release their games dual format. I mean, if you go down to the shop now and bought, um, well, gee, let's stick with the era, uh, something like Warcraft 3, you'd be able to throw that in your Mac and it would play natively right through to, well, StarCraft 2 and World of Warcraft. They're Mac native clients as well, aren't they? Yep, and all the installs are on the one CD as well. Which is pretty groundbreaking stuff, especially for something that's nearly 12 years old. And can you imagine, uh, you know, the amount of work of the developers that went into this game and then basically having to port it and do it all again for, you know, two completely different operating systems. That's real dedication. And I think that is one of the hallmarks of Blizzard. Uh, you know, the whole quality and trying to cater to everybody. It's so awesome. But you know what? Staring at this screen, oh, I mean, it brings back amazing memories, but it also makes me shiver, just like you. The amount of hours I put into this, it's just one of those games that you've just got to, just just one more go, just one more one more area, one more quest. It, it, it's just insatiable desire. And of course, I don't have to tell you, Tallahassee, that desire is for one thing and one thing only. Screw the story, although loot. it has got... Yeah, loot! It's got an amazing story, by the way, for those of you who are interested, uh, and you'll see that as we play through. But Tallahassee's absolutely right. This is all about the loot. And, uh, boh, you know what? Inventory Tetris. Having to decide what loot to trash and what loot to pick up, that's half of the game. It gets so frustrating at times. But anyway, we'll get into that. So let's start um, with a quick overview of what we're looking at here. I mean, I doubt there's many of our viewers 